Good evening and welcome to another video. Tonight I'm going to be talking to you about um, the Mesh-tastic, the little world of Mesh-tastic, which is the small radio devices uh, that enable you to send secure messages between devices and devices that step between each other, hence the, hence the name Mesh in the Mesh-tastic name. And um, this is the uh, Heltec Lowbrow 32. That's it in this little box, which I'll unpack in a moment. This is the device with it uh, basically set up, and I'll show you that working in a minute. Now, this is um, seems to have gained quite a lot of popularity on, on YouTube at the moment, and I've been exploring them and having a little play, setting them up, and in fact, I ended up buying far too many of them. Uh, so I'm gonna take you through this evening on what comes in the box, how you might set up the firmware on them, and the various use cases for them. So I'll take you through step by step, and um, and you may then, and I'll put some links down below on, on where you can find these. They're readily available online, um, and they've been in short supply for a while, but they seem to be coming back now. Um, Amazon have got them, and eBay have got them, so within a couple of days you can get them, and at fairly realistic prices as well. So without further ado, let's unpack one. So here we are, here's the little box that you get in the post if you order one of these. And a really nice package, nice and compact anyway. So this is the Heltec LoRa 32, and we're working on a particular frequency range uh, in the UK. This varies a little bit from country to country, but um, I'll put a little chart up on which ones you should be looking for. for but for the UK, this is the kind of frequency range you're looking for. Um, once you're inside, they come with a jumble of little bits and pieces. We've got the board itself, which is nice and compact. Um, on this one, I've already plugged into a little connector there on the back, but there's uh, the connector for the aerial. So they vary a little from model to model that come through, even though they're all supplied by and manufactured by the same people. If I show you one I've got that's currently set up that I've been using, it came with a small antenna that connects. It's the same connector on there, but it's just a little bit of wire with a, with a coil on it. Um, Otherwise, the same release of the board it comes with a slightly different uh, connector on the end, which is kind of quite handy if you're going to mount one into a box or something like that for external use. But on this one, again, you can just plug this piece onto the end of the, the board and then attach your, uh, your aerial onto the end. So it's a superbly compact little device. Um, there's the antenna that's built into a little coil there for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi for its connection. Um, it's got a USB-C port on the bottom there for power and there's a couple of little buttons on there. There's a reset so you can just click on this one, very fiddly to get to, but uh, it's uh, to, just to reset it. If I pop some power on, um, let's, let's power up the one I've got where I've already put uh, the Mesh-tastic software on there. You'll see in a few moments um, the little board boots up, doesn't take long at all. and. Um, we can uh, use this little button here to reset it. So if for some reason during plugging it in, the power didn't start correctly, you can just press reset and the thing will reboot again. Saves on plugging and pushing it back in again. Quite handy when you've got mounted in a separate little box um, rather than having to fiddle around with the connector. And then there's a little button on this side there which you can press exactly the same and it will step through depending on what software you've got on there, of course, but it will step through uh, various options for either reading messages and things like that have appeared on there or this one pointing out some of the um, other mesh devices this one connects to um, and you can just step through those. The majority of working and configuring with these is done through an app or through a web browser on a, on a computer. Uh, so if you, you've got um, an iPhone or an Android phone there is a specific Mesh-tastic app. Again I'll put some links down below for that and maybe a little bit more on the website on um, on uh, downloading those apps to make sure you've got the right one. But nice and straightforward. So, power socket on the side there, USB-C, always nice to see. Uh, stepping through with a the button there for um, options when it's running and a reset. And um, the aerial connects at this end. OLED display on there, which I've got a little, uh, little piece of polyheel on this one. I'll move that out of the way. And also in the box we've got as well as so the aerial that you would get so let's go back to the the new one here there's not been set up or anything uh, so you've got the aerial lead and an important point here you you definitely want to have that aerial attached before you power up 
because this is a transceiver, um, you run the risk of damaging components if you do not have an aerial on it, and then you start setting up the transmission. So make sure you do that. Nice and straightforward and easy to click on there. Um, also in the box, we've got another power lead, a little fly lead, which on the underside of it, you can attach that under there um, to get a, 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 an alternative supply for the power rather than using USB-C. And you also get in there uh, some little connectors here so you can uh, mount those if you want to um, connect uh, this little board up to connect to other projects. Um, there's plenty of information on the Meshtastic website and on the Heltech site um, as far as pinouts and things like that for using this. But all in all, a very neat little package, very compact and comes with basically everything you need to get started short of a USB-C lead, of course, and a power supply. But I think just about everybody has these nowadays. And while we've got this here, um, let me have some a little route around in the background. And um, I've, uh, as I mentioned, I've bought far too many of these, but I set myself up a little external unit, which I'm just gonna show you here. Let's move some of these bits out of the way. This is one that I'd, um, I've uh, built into a little uh, takeaway food container as it happens. So I've got a 10,000 milliamp hour battery pack which runs this for about two to three days, which is quite good. And um, I've got a little USB-C lead, fly lead in there which plugs into the side. And I've taken the aerial outlet here and mounted it in through the side of the container so I could attach it to another aerial when out and about. So it could be something like this that goes on there. I've got a small mag mount one, which has got a long fly lead, so I can go and hide this in a hedge up on the hills and set this up as um, a relay point for my main transmitting one, one of these, um, which again, I'll take you through a little bit of that later on, or maybe on a separate video. But uh, the idea behind these mesh-tastic devices is that you can have multiple ones of them and they link to each other to get a, a better range. So I might be able to, uh, as I have a friend on the other side of the town that's got one of these set up in his front window, and um, I can send him a message or relay through him to get to a further station somewhere else. But um, that will become a little bit clearer later on. So anyway, let's pop this one out of the way and let's um, talk a little bit more about setting the firmware up on one of these so you can do the very same thing. So I've got my... I've got my Heltec board plugged in on a USB-C cable and plugged into the side of my MacBook at the moment, my MacBook Pro. You can do this on a Windows machine, on a MacBook, I think you can do it on a Linux machine as well. I might just test that one out later on, but for the website, it appears identical. The only thing you might need to do on a Windows machine is to set up drivers for a USB device, but uh, for when you plug the board in. In the case of the uh, the Heltec board on a Mac, it just recognises it. So I come to here and I choose, so I'm on the website, flashy.meshtastic.org. I come to select target device. I'll drop that down and I can see my Heltec V3 board listed there. I'm going to click on that one. I can then select the firmware and this gives you some older versions, um, uh, older versions of ones that are coming up or the stable ones, which are the beta ones. So um, uh, I always recommend going for the latest stable one. So that's what we're gonna go for now. So I shall choose that. And the next thing we get to do is to choose to flash it. So I'm gonna choose flash. And it comes up with um, a couple of bits and pieces on there about um, this version. Um, gives you a link to the full change log for what they've got done on this one. But I'm just gonna click on continue. Um, ensure device is plugged in via USB, which I have done. Choose the board rate. Um, so this is the speed at which it does it. I've tended to go for um, a high speed because it's a, I've got a good cable on a good solid machine and not lots running in the background. So I'm gonna go for that. And in this case, I'm gonna do a full arrays and install uh, because uh, this is one that I've never set up before. So it's, this has come straight out of the box. So I'm gonna go for full arrays and install, and then I'm gonna say arrays flash and install. And I'll click on there. Um, it's communicating at the moment with the, uh, with the board. 
So I'm going to click on that and then say, because so I can, can see it's on USB, and I'm going to click on connect. And this little uh, area down here will give us some, an idea of what's happening and how far it's going. So it's whizzing through. I'm going to record this on a separate little video so you can see as well. I'm just holding this and there's nothing else showing at the moment on the Helltech board. At the end of it, it should reboot and then we can see that we're running the correct software. It does take a few minutes. And as we can see down here now, it's uh, we're all good if it gets some to some focus. There we go, fantastic. That's it. It's um, it's now being flashed. So now we've got all the hardware set up, we're going to take you back to the Meshtastic website, to meshtastic.org and to the downloads page. From here you can link to um, several applications to, to then control and set up the, the Helltech board. If you're running an Android phone or an Apple phone, then uh, there are links on this page to the App Store for both of those um, where you can download Meshtastic. It's a great little app and regularly updated. And from here, you can configure the name of your uh, your little mesh tastic board, uh, communications types, which is whether it's a relay or whether you're just using it as a transceiver. And I'm going to do another video shortly uh, just to take you through this step by step. Um, you can also access it and uh, change all of the settings via a web browser. So if you're working on an Apple Mac or a PC, you can and have the, the board connected either directly to it or on your Wi-Fi network, then you can access it via its IP address and set up everything in what's actually a really nice front end to it. So thank you for joining me looking at the Heltec V3 board and its initial configuration. And if you would like to learn more about this and perhaps a little more on the app and configuring it in its various modes, then please do check back again because that will probably be my next video as far as Meshtastic goes. Uh, if you did enjoy this, please give me a thumbs up because that always does help. And if you'd like to follow more of this and be notified, then don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much. See you soon.